Hi guys, in this video we're going to build on what we learned in the previous videos in this text mining series by importing multiple documents into R and then uh, after we've got them imported uh, applying similar if not exactly the same type of transformations to clean the text up and then from there proceed to actually mine the text for interesting patterns sentiment analysis, word cloud, etc. But on this particular video I'm just going to focus on importing the documents plural in and we're going to actually uh, call a, gr uh, a group of documents that are related in some way a corpus. Okay, So uh, there are many ways to do this. First off uh, we're going to need a couple packages possibly in this process and they're the same uh, packages that we used in the uh, importing of a single document. So we're going to need string r, tm, and word cloud if we're going to create a word cloud later. So let's actually just get that out of the way right off the bat. So I'm just copying and pasting this code and basically it's uh, going to load the packages if they're not available uh, in my library it's going to actually install them and then load them okay so once you have these loaded we have all the packages we'll need for this video and possibly for the next couple as well so now i want to focus on the importing of these uh, of this corpus okay so first thing i'll do uh, uh, this implementation will use um, a very base kind of uh, functionality in r which we should all be familiar with first off i need to find the folder where my documents are and actually before you do this you're gonna have to go ahead and uh, grab a couple documents be it news articles essays uh, journal articles whatever they might be uh, save each individual one as a text document, throw them all into the same folder, and that's where I'm uh, kind of starting from. So I could actually show you the folder what I'm, where I'm working with here. It's called text mining, and it's in this folder corpus. So you see I have these four documents here. One of them is a PowerPoint file, and the other three are actually text documents that I, uh, news articles that I copied and pasted. So I have something to work with that's relatively uh, on the same topic. These were all sports related articles on the um, uh, uh, European soccer or football. Okay, so I need this file path. Uh, I could get it from right here or I could also do uh, something like a file choose here and go through that same process of finding that folder. Select one of these documents and then I get at least I get the file path to this particular document. Okay. And once I have the file path for this document I just go one uh, level up and I get the file path for that um, folder I, ca I had uh, called corpus. Okay. Now I need to kind of um, let's save this file path just copy and paste it here we can get rid of that okay notice I took out the uh, cr.txt the name of the uh, specific document because this is just for the folder okay so my folder path is set and what I want to do now is get a list of all the um, documents in that folder that satisfy a particular property and what I want is all the text documents so I purposely put that PowerPoint um, document in there it's because uh, you know you wouldn't you, know, you may have other files in the folder uh, that you don't want uh, involved in this process so you can actually filter those out and, and the way we're going to filter these out is by using the list files and uh, the path we're going to use is this folder that we just created. Uh, so if I just stop right there, look at the four files that you saw, which also includes that PowerPoint. And I'm only interested in these three guys. Okay, so I mean you could have a, you could have a thousand documents. The, the process would be the same. Okay, so what I want to do is uh, I specify the pattern 
And this is very similar to the kind of regex pattern uh, specifications. Um, I'm going to say .txt. It starts with whatever, but it ends in .txt. And this should kind of filter these three, and it does, and drops this guy out. Okay. So now I have the kind of I have a way of getting the particular files in the folder. I need to combine these things and get a separate file path for each of these folders. So let me actually call this a file list. So the file list, just to quickly look at it, is just this. It's actually a, a vector, a character vector of uh, three um, elements, and they are the actual file names. Now, if I could combine these guys with their file path, which I saved as folder, I can kind of then give R what it needs to import them all. So let's combine these. Uh, let's do it step by step. So I'm going to do a paste. I'm going to paste folder. And I'm going to put a forward forward. R needs this. And then I'm going to put the file names. And if I just leave it at this, look what's going to happen. I'm going to get the file path for each of these files, a space, which I don't want, and then the forward slash, forward slash, and the space, and then the name of the files. So if I, I could get rid of that by actually specifying the separation should be empty, and you see I've solved this problem. Okay, now let me save this to file list. Let me update file list to just do this. So now if I type file list, I actually, now I have the particular files. Now this could be thousands. So this will really pay off when you have a lot of documents here. OK, next thing I'm going to do, let me just quickly clear my screen and let me get this guy. Next thing I'm going to do is use read lines. So we've done this before when we imported a single document. And read lines will read a text document in and treat each line as a separate element in a character vector. So we want to apply that, but we want to apply that to all the files on this list, not just one. So we need to combine this with an L apply. Okay. So if we actually look at file list, okay, it's exactly what we thought. So let's actually um, up do an L apply, where we take file list as the argument. Uh, and we're going to apply the function read lines to. Okay, if I hit enter here, I get a few warning messages, but that's kind of probably because the text documents didn't end in a enter. Um, uh, so it's just warning me that there wasn't a final line found. That's fine. Uh, as you can see here, we have generated a list. Here's the first member of that list. It's the lines from document one, right? And there are many empty lines. Remember when we quickly glanced at that file, there were a lot of spaces between the lines. So it's going to read lines, treats each line as a separate element. So empty line comes in. Then, so that had 20 lines. And then document two had uh, another like 30 lines. And then document three add just seven lines okay so uh, that's fine but it's not uh, I don't want all the lines separated like this much like we did with the um, single document let me first call this something ah, just, let's call it a all a is is exactly what we looked at okay and what I want to do is I want to do another I want to apply another function to this list and this time I'm going to apply paste, and then I'm going to say collapse all the lines, all the elements of these vectors in this list, element by element, into one big element. Um, uh, I'm, basically, what I'm saying is this. We still have the three separate members of the list except now all the lines in each of those members were collapsed into one element in a one character element okay 
So this is much closer to what we had, uh, what, what we can work with. So we can actually start cleaning up the text. So now I can call this, I mean, at this point, I could start calling this like sort of like my corpus, right? I have three documents in my corpus. Here they are, right? And if I scroll to the right, you'll actually see they're quite long because it's fitting an entire, uh, what, this, what these were a news article into one line. So I could start, I could proceed kind of cleaning this up. Um, actually, one more thing I should do is I should actually call this something, right? Like, um, let's call this like text, right? Because now we got our text. Or you could call it even corpus if you like. You know, corpus doesn't really matter. Here's corpus. Okay, we have three elements, and now we can start applying our transformation. So we can do G sub, for example, and find a pattern that we want to kind of replace with something else, and we can start working on that. All right, so I'm going to do that in the second part. So watch part two to see me kind of apply the uh, tr text transformations, clean up this text, okay, and then move on from there. All right, so I hope this was helpful. Uh, be sure to share, comment, and like. And until next time, have a great day.